<laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are not gonna believe this one, huh? I think we're gonna need a bigger sawmill. This is a 6,000 pound red oak that we've been waiting to put on this Hudson Warrior sawmill right there in the background. Now that's supposed to handle up to 36 inches round and it will too, we put some big boys through there. Uh, but we live in the land of the oak trees here in Midwest USA. Oh, and if you're new to our channel, my wife and I, we live in a log cabin that I built by myself from scratch, from wood from the forest. And we live kind of like the pioneers do, except it's uh, in the 21st century. We have a little uh, modern conveniences, but we do have no public utilities and we live 100% off rainwater and we grow most of our own food. And so we're getting into making some money on our land here and we're going into the firewood business, you know, selling some firewood to our community and helping out like that. And also we have the sawmill hose so we can make our own lumber and we can also make some slabs and make some countertops and stuff like that for some projects that we have coming up in the future. So if you're cool with that kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow us along on this adventure because we have a lot of cool videos. Yesterday, the last video, we put out a video on harvesting honey with our friend, Dr. Leo. Make sure you check that video out. Yesterday, it was 80 degrees outside. I had on my summer attire. Today, the high this morning, or you know, the temperature this morning when we woke up was 36, and uh, it's just barely over 40, so I got on my felt hat. We're rolling into winter. You guys will see a lot more of that around here. So uh, the problem that I have right now is this log uh, is not gonna make it through that sawmill, and so I got just the fix for it. Ready? Ha! Here we go.
why they call that a portable sawmill okay so in a second here we're going to talk to you guys about the sawmill what's going on with that and this uh, 52 slabber by the Hudson Forest guys out of New York City family run business made in the USA all that stuff we love around here not New York City upstate New York upstate New York they don't even want to be associated with New York City yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is we're going to cut the butt into this uh, log off here so we can get it in through the mill here and plus it's kind of ugly down here at this end and i've been waiting uh to show you guys the uh saw that mr old president trump got me ha <laughs> you guys wanted to see that but it's uh that money we got whatever that was for i don't know i just was in my mailbox i was torn on if i was even going to cash it but i decided to put it to good use and i got me the biggest saw here still had on the shelf here at the local place Oh, so that's pretty good. So we're gonna take this off here. I'm breaking it in kind of, so I'm not gonna run it too hard. And then once I get this cut off, we're gonna talk about the 52, unwrap the motor, I'll put the blade on, show you guys how to do that. And then we'll be finally cutting into this log for the siding for the learning center. So progress as promised, all right? Here we go. down in here somewhere and she'll come back into one. All right, I'll try and give it some twang. Let's see what she looks like when we open her up. Yep. And the nice thing about that saw too is it's a one pass Charlie, right? You want to get a saw that you can do the one pass on. Uh, sometimes that 18 inches would never, you know, I could even get into the middle of here and still on the other side might not even be able to get across it. So you're going to need a long saw if you're going to mess with the big logs. All right, so we're going to start getting this on the tracks and get her positioned.
pick them up about an inch and a half, two inches. Wow, I don't know if I'll fry it. I may have to use the forklift. Oh, you need to work. So we put the blade on. This lever uh, was designed to be a little bit more affordable for the smaller guy that's got big logs to cut or has access to get to them to cut. So that's why we kind of came out with this model. This is how you get the blades out of a box and you get them brand new. Get rid of the zip tie. You want to have gloves on whenever you're handling blades. Because they're sharp and they'll actually go through your gloves just as well. So you want to start up here in this high loop. What I call the high loop. Pinch it right inside here. Bring it out that metal ring. As you're bringing it out, just keep it pinched so it doesn't get away from you. And stand it up a little bit and let it open up. Now whenever I'm putting a new blade on the fan mill, I always check the back seam here for a, a good weld. Look at the weld and make sure that there's not a bump there. If there is, just uh, take a flat file or something and just touch it off a little bit because that'll you'll start hearing that hit your wheel if it if it does uh, have a bump on it. So put this on, step right in, hook it over your end, and we're gonna slip it into the guides. Put on our other band wheel. Put it on, we'll spin it, see how she's running here. Make sure we're getting the right tracking. We got our grease on that bolt. Now you always want to keep your tensioner bolt well lubed. This just come down so it's kind of dry. We had grease on it when we tested it, but always grease your threads here and against the push plate. If you got the smaller mills, put grease on that uh, thrust bearing in there and against the washers and your bolt so that it doesn't seize up. If you have rust on that bolt or sawdust built up, it'll just uh, affect your torque, especially if you're using a torque wrench. You won't be getting the proper torque on your blade. Well, we're finishing up here tensioning the blade up, so I've done enough mills, I don't really need the torque wrench. I feel the blade here, I'm looking for less than a quarter inch deflection, and that's what I'm checking right there. Once the blade gets running, it's going to warm up a little bit and stretch a little bit. Your band wheel belts will recede a little bit because they're going to get warmed up too, so I'll check the tension periodically just to make sure and I'll come over and just pinch it on the guard and check it, but it's, uh, it's pretty good right there where I've got it and uh, we're going to put the guards back on and get things fired up here. You always want to check and make sure that the back side of your blade is 
even with the flush with the back side of your band wheel and your teeth are not riding on the band wheel and I always turn it once I get it tensioned up I always spin it by hand and see how it's tracking turn it around two or three times is great and pull by the spoke so you don't cut your hand and on the back side of the band wheel and one of the beauties about having a portable sawmill is you guys can take these things anywhere. So if you got a bunch of acreage, 100 acres, you can move it around to the different parts of the land where you're starting to harvest some of those trees, some of that lumber. You guys just watched how easy it was for us to switch this out. Put this new machine right here. For us, this is our home office with the uh, sawmill. So this is where all the magic will happen. Well, out of five gallons, I think I got at least a good three in there. All right. Okay, so I want to show you we got a double valve on here. There's one here that comes off the tank. So when you fill your tank, you just unhook the hose and hook it back up. All right. And then this other one here controls your flow on the blade for cooling it and for your lubrication. And you can just shut it off when you're done with your cut so you're not running your fluid all the time. Just reach over, boom, it's right there, easy to reach to. And if you guys are going to run these things in the cold weather, which we will be here, you got to keep an eye on this. You don't want to leave this thing laying around. As the temperatures drop, it'll freeze and bust on you. Well, if it's in cold weather, Doug, you can just use uh, windshield washer fluid. Oh, instead of water. Instead of water. I see. It works perfect. Yeah, that's what we use up north. Learning stuff all the time. You know, the guys up there cut when it's 20 below zero. That's stuff, right. So. That's right. All right, first pass with the uh, slab 52. Ready to go? Ready to go. Fired up. Fired up. Fire go! That's the other close there. No, the close is over here. That's the drop. That's going to be your blade. Yep.
So the reason why we had stopped right there is because we found one of the nemesis of your saw blade, okay? You don't want to run your saw blade through the dirt and the bark, it collects the dirt up underneath it. And when we were going, he noticed it, so we stopped right away. Don't back your saw up when the blade's still turning. So just keep your eye on that kind of stuff and everything will go smooth. You get a lot more life out of your blade and everything will be a lot easier for you. That's why we stopped there, cleaned that off, got the bark off with his old Indian trick, he said. See how he's peeling that bark off. They actually make a debarker at Hudson Forest and you guys can go uh, you can check it out. You buy a spud too, it was a regular spud made for peeling logs. Yeah, yeah, so they got all that stuff. But we're just starting out, so we're getting going here. That's our first pass on it, looks pretty good. And now we're gonna do number two. happened when we were putting down the track uh, we noticed that the concrete slabs off just a little bit no big deal and you'll want to make a note of that if you guys set up your mill you want to make sure you have a good foundation okay so now we have everything set up here but we're off a little bit on this side so right now we're gonna cut the board for that side and then we're gonna be able to get this nice and level so then we can cut our next board which will be the siding uh, for down to the learning center
Roger up. Push her in just a little bit, though. As we cut the cut that little horn off the side there so that mill will come through here nice and smooth because there's a lower pin there and what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna cut this log in half actually 11 inches down and then that way that'll give us our width on our boards because we're cutting one by 11s and then we'll turn this whole thing and then start cutting our boards boom 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 so sometimes you got to clean them and get them out of the way a little bit and then uh, you can start getting into your real cuts here we go So what do we do now? Well, now we need to get some boards off of there. We should take that top one and get it right off of there and set it off to the side. And we'll take that bottom and we're going to flip it, get that down to 11 inches so we get a better face on the other side because we got about three quarters of an inch left. Right. So we'll clean that up again. Then we can get a flat side on that one. Right. And then flip it back over and start buzzing her down. There we go. It's always good to learn different ways everyone does things, and uh, that's what I'm doing right now. So here we go. So we're going to remove this totally off the mill. Correct. Yep. All right. Let me get this up back to the other end.
gotta pick that one up, set it over there, and then come back and get it so you can get it back on there. What you gotta do.
Yeah, so we're about what? Halfway through the first half of the first half. Yep. <laughs> and we gotta change the blades. Uh, this is that dense oak, and it's uh, gonna require probably two blades, you think, or what? Yeah, we should probably be able to finish it with another blade. So we're gonna take this off right now and then put a new blade on and get the back at it. Dull, you might as well change it because you're only gonna mess something up if you don't. Yeah, and a good way you guys can tell too, uh, just from my novice adventure so far, is that you'll start seeing ribs down the board. The duller the band saw gets, the deeper and more pronounced the ribs are. Am I right? Yep. Yeah. You can see on our log cabin there were some spots there where the guy should have changed his blade. Ha! That's all right. I guess I didn't go far enough, huh? Now you can put these dogs right down. Just enough to hold it. You're gonna pick it up.
you out here. Can't hear you. I know you can't. What's that? Check that one. <laughs> Check that one at level. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, you kicked that thumbs out of your back. Sure. 